We're, 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 you know, some of us, you know, we're, we're, you know, God said he, named, he never changes. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. But us, on the other hand, they say, well, God, where'd you go? God didn't go anywhere. Where'd you go? Amen. If God's missing in your life, if God is moving your life, guess who left? It wasn't him. It was you. He said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. Unfortunately, people in the church, we, you know, we like, we like it to be like Burger King. We like to have it our way, Gary. <laughs> we like to have it our way. You know, we like to go through the drive-thru. We like to come into church, and we like to, everybody should be expected to dress the same as everybody else, and everybody better have their hair fixed. They better not come in there already with no makeup on, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Heard somebody talking about something like that today. Talking about coming in there wearing what clothes they had on. You know, Jesus wasn't crucified on no clothesline. Amen. Amen. I, I'm sure. I, I'm sure that you know uh, the blind man. I'm sure he wasn't. I, I'm sure he probably stunk. Amen. I guarantee you he was dirty. Amen. He he didn't have a whole lot of people to help him. You know. Uh, but when he began to call upon the name of Jesus, Jesus didn't say, no, you're not dressed right. And Jesus didn't say, no, you don't have makeup on. When he began to call on Jesus, guess what? Jesus heard his cry. Amen. And he came to his rescue. Amen. Calling on his name. And, and Jesus, didn't tell, that Jesus didn't come up and say, well, guess what? I'm going to put this guy with you. He's going to take and give you a bath and clean you up, and get you dressed up and everything, and going to bring you back, then I'll talk to you. He said, no. He said, what would you have me to do for you? Right where he was at, in his mess, in his place, right where, stinking, nasty, dirty, blind, probably uneducated. What do you want me to do for you? He could have said anything. Brother Darrell, he could have asked for somebody to clothe him or somebody to, to give him some new clothes or somebody to, to take care of him all the days of his life or he could have asked him for a new stick you know that he could beat around on you know find his way around what's wrong with the church a lot of times they're not specific enough with God I taught Micah a long time ago a important lesson about being specific with God See, the blind man, he, he could ask for all kinds of things. Well, you could ask for all kinds of things. But a lot of us, we're asking for the wrong things. He said, you have not because you ask not, or you ask amiss. That's true. Amen? That's true. A lot of us need to quit praying that God will bless us financially and God will bless us spiritually. Amen. And then financially, the, the, the spiritual things, once they come then the blessings will come financially. Amen. Amen. We, we need to stop worrying about what we don't have and be praising God for what we do have. Amen. Because a lot of us, uh, sometimes we think we need more than we really need. Amen. We, 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 we just need, 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 need. We're a needy bunch of folks sometimes. I know I'm needy. Uh, I, I, I need a boat. I need, uh, I need an RV. I, I need, uh, to, I need uh, a million dollars. I, I want that. Those are things that, that I think I need. But, but God said, no. He said, you need wisdom. <laughs> he said, you need some understanding about what's going on. You, you, need some, you need them blinders took off. You need to receive your sight spiritually. So you quit looking naturally, and you'll start looking spiritually. Amen. And you'll see the things that really matter. Because, see, all these things are going to pass away. All those things that I want, that boat... It'll be gone. Amen, Brother Gillis. That, that, that $100 million, it'll be gone. Amen. It'll burn up just like everything else with him. But Jesus said, my things, he said, they're eternal. Amen. Eternal. Amen. And those are things that are important. Ain't nothing wrong with having boats. Ain't nothing wrong with having money. Ain't nothing wrong with having uh, RVs, campers. Ain't nothing wrong with those things. But I'm going to tell you right now, the most important thing is your relationship with God. You better make sure that your relationship with God is where it needs to be. Before we got you, know, I don't want God to ever bless me with anything that's going to separate me from Him. Or put my relationship with Him in a strain. Amen? It's going to cause me problems. Well, it's going to open doors for the devil to get in. 
Amen. Because Brother Gillis, I know there ain't nothing wrong going to the lake. And I know there ain't nothing wrong going to the mountains. There ain't nothing wrong coming to the church either. Amen. I, the preacher one time we had a discussion. It's the up and down time of year. They either up in the mountains or down at the river. Amen. In the church. That, that's, that's a problem right now. I guarantee you, Sloan's in Von Orr at 11 o'clock today. You could have killed half of the people in Monroe and Blount County. Because they's all getting ready to go spend the time on the lake instead of coming to the house of God. And a lot of them church people. That's what's bad. Y'all don't mind us taking vacation, but listen, we start leaving God out of everything, out of our life. Guess what? We begin to separate ourselves from God. We begin to allow a foothold for the devil. We allow for things to come in that shouldn't be there. And we wonder what's going on in our life. Well, let's, guess what? Let's go to the lake on Saturday or Friday. Uh, you know, we need to take a vacation day on Sunday. God, under God, yeah, that's good. But let's don't do it every Sunday. Let's don't make sure that we're not doing it every single service. Let's make sure that we're not missing every single service. Oh, well, I can find God down the lake. You can find him down the lake. But I'm going to tell you right now, you get into fellowship with a bunch of men and women of God. I'm going to tell you right now, in the Spirit begins. You've seen what happened here tonight, amen. The Spirit of God begins. You ain't going to find that everywhere. Amen. amen. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together with other believers that you may withstand the wiles of the devil. I need your help. Amen. I need your help. You guys encourage, you don't, you don't understand. You guys encourage me in, in a way that nobody, I see guys every day. I see people every day, but they don't encourage me the way that you do. When we come to the house of God, I see you, and I see your smile on your face. I see that God's blessed. Listen, that encourages me. That God is working in your life. and that, Man, hey, you guys lift me up. The same people that I run into outside of here, it's not the same thing. Amen, Amen they tear you down. I mean, you know them, them people you run into, Brother Bill, they, oh, whoa, it's me. Everything can go wrong. Everybody's against me. You know? Verse 15 says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound for the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. Renewed day by day. Not by what we do, but by the Spirit of God it's renewed every day. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going I'm to encourage you. I tell you, Christian, she uh, came in there this morning in the, in the bedroom, her and Ivy. And they had that Mandisa song playing, Good Morning. And uh, Ivy was just eating it up. She was dancing, going. And it just changed the whole atmosphere. The devil didn't even show up this morning. <coughs> How about that? How about that? No, maybe it's you. You had to play that music get the devil off of you. But anyway, get up in the morning with a song. Get up in the morning thinking, praise God, it's Monday. And not, woe is me, it's Monday. Hey, seen a guy one time that had a pretty good saying, young people. He said uh, he had a bad attitude and he looked at the guy that was talking to him and he said, you know what? He said, attitude reflects leadership. Attitude reflects leadership. Huh. That's pretty deep. You get to thinking about leadership. Who am I? I'm leading Micah. Uh, so my attitude is going to resonate off him because he's going to have the same attitude that I got. Uh, if my attitude is good, guess what Micah's attitude is going to be? Good. But I get my attitude because I know what my leadership is. My leadership's not of the devil. Amen. My leadership is of heaven. Amen. And he's leading me. He's leading me. And so I resonate that from him to me. So that's the reflection. The sun reflects. The moon is a reflection of the sun, right? I want to be a reflection of the sun. I want to be the moon. Amen. I want to be a reflect. I want to reflect Jesus. I don't think Jesus would be walking around having a, a bad attitude. About everything is good. That's right, my God. Jesus ain't going to be walking around. Don't talk to me. It's Monday. <laughs> I know them people. Don't talk to me. I ain't had my coffee yet. 
people. Bless God. Go in there and get some. That way you'll get perked up. Amen. Don't speak to me. I ain't had my breakfast yet. You know. Or woe is me. It's another Monday. I'm pretty sure that if we'll put a smile on our face and get a song in our heart, Monday to Wednesday won't seem that bad when we come to back to the house of God. We won't drag ourselves back in here like we've been kicked in the teeth by a Jerusalem donkey. Amen. We won't, we won't come dragging back in here on Wednesday like we've been uh, you know, hit by a 747. All limped up and arms missing. And come in here and God have to bandage us back up and send us right back out. Amen. Attitude of gratitude. Thank God for what you do have, not what you don't have. Amen. I thank God I got a roof over my head, shoes on my feet, clothes on my back. It may be the same clothes I've had for the last 22 years, but hey, they're clothes. I don't throw anything away. You just ask my wife. I've got pants from when I was in the ninth grade probably. I don't know. She's like, you got way more clothes than I've got. But I just thank God, an attitude of gratitude. And in 17 it says, for our light affliction. Compare what we go through to what Jesus went through. And that's what they compare our walk with Christ like. He says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Why is it just for a moment? Because in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be out of here. We can be gone. Even in death. That quick. We suffer this light affliction, but for a moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. Our light affliction here, it's like a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks. Which one weighs more? Huh? I said a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks. They both weigh the same. It don't matter. <laughs> but wait. So our light affliction here. Yeah, somebody may run us through the mud, Gary. They may, they may talk bad about say, that Jesus freak, that, that crazy uh, person down there, them crazy bunch laying on hands down there. But the weight that that carries in glory. <laughs> To get to live for eternity in heaven with Jesus. The Savior of the world. The one that saved us. To walk the streets of gold. To see the gates of pearl. To walk into the kingdom of the almighty God. Amen. What a light affliction. That is. In the scope of what is to come in eternity. He said the weight. Of this light affliction. In comparison The eternal weight of glory. What is it? Why, why do we worry about... If we talk to somebody about Jesus and they say, Get away from me, I don't want to hear about that. They're not pushing you away, they're pushing Him away. My biggest thing is that Christians wear their feelings on their sleeves. You, if you're going to be a Christian, you better have some tough skin. It's ain't for, it's ain't for wimps and crybabies. You, 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 you better be ready to be lamb blasted, talked about, looked down upon, pointed at. But I'm going to tell you right now, that in the scope of eternity is absolutely nothing. Why would I want to give up heaven to make somebody like me? Young people, why you want to give up? Why you want to give up being known in heaven with being popular on earth? That... That don't carry the same weight. That's not, even, that's not even in the same ballpark. In the same comparison. 